achiever well beyond karate. Karate was the physical example of what was going on inside of him when he was a boy, born in San Francisco, studied at the University of Seattle, studied philosophy, excelled, taught on philosophy to his fellow students, was brilliant. He had brought his mind to a place where he could study and remember and teach. And foremost, he was a teacher before karate, and then he became a student of Shaolin. Shaolin is rooted in the origin of martial arts, which started in India. And the Wing Chun school of Shaolin is a very brilliant way, I don't know how many of you fight, but it's a way of simultaneously defending and attacking, which is why he has that amazing speed, whereas normally, if you know karate, you're blocking, throwing blocks, but he would find his way, and then the one-inch fist, which is really this movement, if you hit someone and then into their heart, he would be able to have so much intention and passion behind that in his whole body that that fist, that one-inch punch, would drive a man 10, 15 feet across the street the road. So there's a lot more to martial arts than beating people up. That, that's, that's a misrepresentation by Hollywood. And anyone who studies the martial arts, I do, studies it to make peace, to prevent violence. To say, even at the, at the price of losing face, as they say, avoiding a fight, disarming others. I've been confronted by some very scary people in my life, and I, I'm not belted today. I was a green belt about 10 years ago, so I don't know what I am today, but I'm confident. And a big fellow said he was a brown belt, and he made this macho remark and said, I could take you, and I thought, why would you even think that way? And, you know, I'm a man of peace and, and gentleness. Why would we not want to greet each other positively and assume we're connected, we're in the same species? And he, did, he didn't like my talk. He thought I was preaching. And he said, you're more than that. You're a, you're a seventh level, seventh dawn black belt. And because of my confidence, so, so often, not often, three times in my life I've gotten out of pretty scary situations because my confidence said to people, no. But inside, the tiger in me says, no, you don't want to let this tiger out. So I have such a respect. I hate violence. I absolutely hate it. But I would certainly use, use it in self-defense or to minimize conflict. So Bruce Lee, discipline. What did he teach us? He taught us he could do push-ups on two fingers, right? His thumb and his finger, boy. But what he taught us is we could transcend any belief we have about ourselves. He did not set out to be a hero, or he did not set out to seek celebrity. When he started teaching karate, one of the older teachers resented what he did in Los Angeles for sharing the deep, deep secrets of the Shaolin, of the monks, and challenged him to a fight. Well, what was his attitude? His attitude was, come on. And he met this other fellow who was bigger than him. You'll see this in his movies, too. He goes, come on. like. Let's hurry up and get this over with. So his attitude is, he's already won the battle. Why? He studied Sun Tzu, Chinese militarist, who gave some great advice on conflict. He said, the defeated warrior goes to battle and tries to win. The victorious warrior wins first and then goes to battle. The defeated warrior goes to battle and tries to win. The victorious warrior wins first and then goes to battle. How would you feel if you were Bruce Lee and you knew whatever fight you were going into, you already had the attitude that told you you were going to win and go home and have tea later? It's an attitude that preceded the skill, and it's an attitude that reinforces discipline. When you see those lightning fast moves, that's discipline. That's thousands of hours of practice, practice, practice. So discipline. Also, one other point I want to make before we wrap up here pretty soon. We've got six more minutes. The key to Bruce Lee's success was concentration, not just repetition. Concentration. Space repetition is taught as a way of studying and remembering, and it's important. But space repetition with concentration will make you a better student. How do you concentrate? You eliminate distractions, whatever they might be. You can close your door, turn off the radio, whatever and also feed your senses. Sheila Ostrander wrote a book called Super Learning. It's a great book, another groundbreaking resource in education. What she found is students who are listening to Baroque music, Baroque music models the heartbeat, 45 to 70 beats per minute. It's why good restaurants will have Baroque music in the background. It produces a relaxed body, alert mind. If you 
Google that up, you'll find super learned music. It's certain music that will relax your body and allow you to absorb information, particularly if it's memorization. Art Linkletter was taking a trip. He had to learn a language. He was going to a set another country in three weeks. I forget the country. He learned super learning. And in three weeks, he taught him basic conversational, I forget. And what they had the students do is lay down on mats, close their eyes, relax, and a tape said the words and the translation. And passively, in a relaxed state of concentration, retention is stronger. So that's a really good tip if you 